Hey everybody, it's Jason from Code Monkeys, and welcome to another Code Monkeys tutorial. In today's video, we will be demonstrating how to safely charge your lithium polymer or lipo batteries using the various types of charging that should be available on most four button chargers. So here we will be using the Tenergy TB6B four button charger, and most of these four button chargers should function the same way, or at least very similarly to this charger. So if you have a different brand, you will be able to follow along. All right, so to turn the charger on, we need to connect the power supply that came with the charger to the DC input port, which requires the DC input to be between 11 volts and 18 volts. And we plug that in like this. And then you need to plug the power supply into your home's AC outlet. And now the charger's LCD display will light up. And this charger also came with two crocodile clips, which look like this. And this will also get connected to the same port as the provided power supply using this plug here. And the crocodile clips can be used to power your charger by connecting them to example to a 12 volt battery. And notice that underneath the LCD display the types of batteries this charger supports are listed and the number of cells that this charger supports for each type of battery is also listed. So this charger will support lithium ion, lithium polymer, and lithium iron phosphate batteries that have between one to six cells connected in series. And it also supports nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium batteries that have between one to 15 cells. And it will also support lead acid batteries with voltages ranging from two volts to 20 volts. And the charge current for this charger is listed as well. And it ranges from 0.1 amps to 5.0 amps. And the discharge current is also listed and it ranges from 0.1 amps to 1.0 amps and the maximum power this charger can deliver is listed at 50 watts and the discharge power this charger can deliver is given to be 5 watts and this charger also provides 1 to 5 cycles of cyclic charging and discharging and can store up to 5 different batteries which means you don't have to re-enter a battery's parameters over and over again and this is done using the save and load functionality of the charger and in the next video we will discuss this functionality in more detail and demonstrate how to use the save and load functions and the charger also has a temperature sensor port and you can attach a temperature sensor probe which can be used to monitor the temperature of your charger and there is also a port for the balance connector board which supports two to six cell batteries where the cells are connected in series and here's the balance connector board and and notice that each port on the balance connector board is labeled as 2s 3s 4s etc and that the top pin is used for the black or negative lead of your balance connector on your battery. Also there is no port for one cell batteries because a one cell battery doesn't have to be balanced since it only has one cell. Also other chargers may have these balance connector ports on the side of the charger. Like for example they may be over here and instead of on this separate board so you would connect your balance connector into the corresponding balance connector port on the side of the charger. And the output port on the charger is where the banana plugs get plugged in. And here are the banana plugs. And the red lead gets plugged into the positive output port and the black lead gets plugged into the negative output port. And this particular charger also came with an octopus plug that splits into seven different types of connectors which includes a Tamiya connector, a mini Tamiya connector, includes a JST connector, and a high-tech connector hopefully you can see there and it also comes with an EC3 connector and a Dean's connector which actually has a cap on it so we have to remove the cap and now you can see the Dean's connector and it also came with an extra set of black and red leads 
which didn't have a connector on it, so I soldered on an XT60 connector. And we also have here a 3 cell 5000 milliamp hour battery, LiPo battery with a C rating of 50 and a discharge rate or a C rating of 50 and a burst rating of 100. And here we are going to want to charge this battery at the 1C charge rate, which if you remember from the previous video is found by multiplying 1 by the C value, which in this case is 5 amps, since 5,000 milliamps divided by 1,000 is 5 amps, and 1 times 5 amps is simply 5 amps, so the charge rate for this battery is 5 amps. And once again, if you remember from the previous video, you can also charge certain batteries at other charge rates like 2C, 5C, or even 10C, for example. But remember, you cannot do this for all batteries, so be sure to refer to your battery's user manual before attempting to charge at a higher charge rate. Also remember that if you charge at the 1C charge rate or even a lower charge rate, like for example 0.5C, you will extend the life of your battery. So just because you can charge at a higher charge rate does not mean you always should. However, if you need to quickly charge your battery, you can charge it at a higher charge rate that is specified by the manufacturer of the battery. Also notice the main leads of this battery, which are over here. And the red lead is the positive lead, and the black lead is the negative lead. And the main connector, which in this case is the XT60 connector, is what gets connected to the corresponding output connector of your charger, which in this case would be this XT60 connector. And this is what is used to provide the current that charges your battery. And it also has a balance connector, which is right over here. And this is what gets connected to the balance connector board. And the port is specified by the number of cells your battery has. And be sure to plug the black lead or negative lead of your balance connector into the corresponding pin of the balance connector board or port which in this case is the top pin. So here it's upside down. So in this case, it would be this port right up here. And the balance connector is what will ensure that each cell of the battery has the same voltage after charging, which is crucial to increasing the lifespan of your battery. All right, so now before we demonstrate how to use the four buttons on this charger to use the four different types of charging. We are going to briefly discuss some things you should take into consideration when purchasing a charger. So first of all, when purchasing a charger, you want to make sure it supports the type of battery as well as the cell count. And if you plan to now or in the future use different types of batteries with a variety of cell counts, then be sure to get a charger that can support a multitude of battery types and a multitude of cell counts, then you should look at the maximum charge current and the maximum amount of power your charger can deliver. And understanding the relationship between current rating, between the current rating of your charger, the power rating of your charger, and the voltage of your battery is key to understanding the type of charger you should purchase. So if you recall, the 1C charge rate for this 5,000 milliamp hour battery is five amps. And just by looking at the charge rating for this charger, it appears this charger is capable of producing a high enough current to charge this battery at its 1C charge rate. However, this charger will only be able to theoretically produce a 5 amp current to charge the battery if the battery's overall voltage is 10 volts or less because the power is equal to the voltage of your battery multiplied by the current being delivered by your charger. And in this case, 10 volts times 5 amps is equal to 50 watts, which is the maximum amount of power this charger can deliver. So you will only be able to theoretically charge this battery when the overall voltage is 10 volts, for example, because an overall voltage of 10 volts means that if your battery is balanced, each cell is approximately 3.3 volts, which is really the lowest you want to take the cells down to because you will start to see performance issues as the voltage of your cells decrease. And once the voltage of a cell drops below approximately three volts, your battery will start to experience irreversible damage. And I'm saying theoretically charge this battery at 5 amps because in reality there are efficiency losses in the charger and in the input voltage to the charger which will reduce the charge current even more. So when this battery is fully charged, which is 4.2 volts per cell, which means the overall voltage of this battery will be 3 times 4.2 volts since there are 3 cells which is equal to 12.6 volts, the maximum current this charger will theoretically be providing is approximately 3.97 amps since the current provided by 
the charger is equal to the power provided by the, this charger divided by the voltage of the battery and this relationship comes from solving our previous equation for the current. So as the voltage of your battery increases, the charge current will decrease and if your charger cannot provide a high enough power rating, then you may not be able to charge your battery at even the 1C charge rate. Now this is not necessarily a bad thing because remember the lower the charge current that you use, the longer the lifespan of your battery. But you may not always have the benefit of being able to charge your batteries for an extended period of time. So if you can afford it, you should buy a charger that meets at least the 1C charge rate for your battery. So when purchasing your charger, be sure to calculate the charge current your charger can provide to your battery by dividing the power rating of your charger by the voltage of your battery and making sure it meets the desired charge rate for your battery while remembering that the voltage of your battery increases as it charges and that efficiency losses will occur in your charger. And when buying a charger, it may not be a bad idea to just buy a charger with a very high power rating since they are not that much more expensive than the lower power rating chargers and because then you will be able to charge a greater variety of batteries at a multitude of different C ratings which means you will be able to charge your batteries in a timely manner but you should only do that if you plan on building larger sized drones which will require batteries with higher charge rates. Now some other things to take into consideration when buying these chargers is of course the quality and price of the chargers and one quick way to help you choose between chargers with similar specs, quality and features is to perform a cost per watt calculation which is done by dividing the cost of the battery by the maximum power that can be pr provided by the battery. So if you had for example a charger that cost $50 with a maximum power rating of 100 watts, the cost per watt would be $50 divided by 100 watts which is equal to 50 cents per watt. Also pay attention to warranty, repair and replacement policies in case something happens to the charger and you should also pay attention to if the charger comes with a power supply because not all chargers will. If it has a balance feature which the majority if not all of the LiPo battery chargers will have this balance feature and Make sure that the balance voltage accuracy is ideally between 0.01 volts to 0.02 volts. And if it shows all of the cell's voltages while balancing, and if it has a separate balance connector board, or if it has a balance connector, or if it has balance connector ports on the side of the charger, and if it comes with output leads, and if so, the types of connectors it has. And some other features to pay attention to is if the charger has an easy to read LCD display, if the charger has different types of charging, which if you remember from the previous video includes normal charge, balanced charge, storage charge, and fast charge, and if it has the ability, the ability to save and load battery parameters. And of course safety features such as reverse polarity protection, which means the battery will be protected if you attempt to charge it backwards, a temperature sensor port with a temperature probe to protect your battery from overheating, cell count confirmation protection before charging, a timeout feature which will stop the charging after a certain amount of time has passed, and over and under voltage protection. And also be sure that before you charge, discharge, or store your LiPo batteries that you are doing it in a room with concrete or brick walls like a basement or a garage like I'm doing it in, and on a non-flammable surface such as concrete or ceramic and ideally you want to do it in a fireproof container such as a lipo safe bag or you could construct a container from bricks and cinder blocks for example and never leave a lipo battery unattended while charging in case something goes wrong all right so now that we have gone briefly gone over some of the things you should take into consideration when purchasing a charger we will now be demonstrating how to properly use the four button charger. So I'm going to connect the battery. So let me connect the banana plugs. So the red lead gets connected to the positive output port and the black lead gets connected to the negative output port. And adjust the camera so you can see it a little bit better. And then I'm going to plug the battery in, the main connector of the battery in. And 
Okay. Put that over there. And then I'll connect the balance connector port. All right, so to cycle through the types of batteries and the other functionality, we need to press the mode slash escape key. And this will cycle through. And you can also cycle through using the decrement button. And that'll cycle through the other way. And the buttons on your charger may be labeled differently. So your mode slash escape button may be labeled as type slash stop, for example. And your decrement button may be labeled with a minus sign. So if you cycle through all the options, you will see user set program, program select lipo data or load data, save data, you will see um, PB or lead acid. So these are the types of batteries this charger supports. You'll see nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, and lastly, you'll see the option to charge lipo batteries. So once you make sure you are charging the correct type of battery, you need to press the enter slash start button, which is over here. And now you need to select the type of charging you would like to do, and you can cycle through the options by pressing the increment button. So we have normal charge, balance charge, fast charge, storage charge, and discharge. And we will discuss discharging your LiPo batteries in a future video. And you can also cycle through the types of charging the other way by pressing the decrement button. So you'll see that you have the option to do a storage charge, fast charge again, balance charge, and now we're back at the normal charge. And here we're going to start by demonstrating how to perform a normal charge. So we need to press the enter slash start button. And now now you will be asked to input the charge current value. So that'll begin to flash. And to change the value of the charge current, you can simply press the decrement button to decrease the charge current by 0 0.1 volts. And if you hold down the decrement button, this will quickly change the charge current and you see that the lowest it can be is 0.1 amps and you can press the increment button to increase the charge current by 0.1 amps and if you hold it down it will quickly increase it and the maximum that it can increase it up to is 5.0 amps and to and remember that it's recommended to charge at the 1C charge rate which is 5 amps so for this 5000 milliamp hour battery so that's why we're going with the 5.0 amps and then we will press the enter slash start button and now the voltage of the battery is going to start to flash and you can simply use the same keys as we did before to change the voltage so if you hold down the decrement key you'll see that the lowest that it supports is 3.7 volts which is a one cell battery and then if you Hold it, you see that the highest voltage that this charger supports is 22.2 volts, which is a six cell battery. And remember that we're charging a three cell battery, so we wanna do it at 11.1 volts, which is the three cells. And now all you have to do is press the enter button. And then if you hold down the enter button, you'll see that it will display battery weight check, which means it is still not charging because the charger is checking that the value of entered for the voltage is approximately accurate and that there is a battery connected. So we're gonna hold that down and now it's checking. Now the screen, so now the charger will check to make sure the voltage for the battery is not too low or too high. And if it is, it will cancel the charge and the charger will check and to manually cancel it, you just hit the escape key. Okay, so to enter the charging again, we hold it down. And you see the battery weight check screen. And then you need to confirm the number of cells you've provided to the, to the charger. And you do that by hitting the enter key. And now the battery will start to charge. 
So on the top row, the type of battery, which is lithium polymer in this case, and the number of cells are shown, and how the cells are connected, which in this case is three cells connected in series, and then the current that you are currently charging at is displayed, which is currently 4.4 amps. In this case, and next to that, the voltage of the battery is displayed, which is currently 11.67 volts. In this case, and the voltage will continue to go up during the charge, and on the bottom row, the type of charging that is being performed is displayed, which in this case is a normal charge. The time in seconds that has passed since the beginning of this charge is also displayed, and the total milliamp hours that has been put into the battery as it charges is also shown on the bottom row. And now this battery will continue to charge until the total voltage is 12.6 volts which means it is fully charged and as the voltage of the battery increases the charge current provided will start to decrease which stems from our early discussion of the relationship between the charge current the total voltage of the battery and the maximum power that can be provided by the charger and is also why the charger was not even initially charging at the specified charge rate of 5 amps and if you remember from the previous video, performing a normal charge on your battery simply brings the total voltage of the battery up without paying attention to if the cells in the battery were balanced at the beginning of the charge and if they remain balanced during the charge. So to ensure the cells of the battery remain balanced while charging, we need to perform a balance connector or a balance charge. So first we need to cancel this normal charge, which we do by hitting the escape button. And then we need to plug the balance connector into the corresponding port on the balance connector board. So I will do that. Making sure that the black lead is in the specified port. And now we need to perform the balance charge and we do that by pressing the increment key. And then Always be sure to check the charge rate and voltage because they may not be the same values as the values used for other types of charging since the charger will just store the last values you entered. All right, so now once the values for the charge rate and current are correct, which they are in our case because it's already 5.0 amps and we're charging a three cell battery, we hold down the enter slash start button. It performs the check and you will be asked to give confirmation and then you can press enter to start the balance charge. And the same screen will appear as the normal charge with the only difference being the type of charger. Charging is now denoted as balance and you can also view the individual voltage of each cell by pressing the increment button. So the first cell is 3.90 volts, the second is 3.90 volts, and the third is 3.9 zero volts and the line below it will be used to display the voltage of the remaining cells if you had a four cell five cell or six cell battery and now this battery is nearly balanced right now but as the charge continues the cells may become slightly different and the balance charge will make sure each cell is approximately the same when the battery is fully charged and the cell should be within 0.01 .01 volts to 0.02 volts and to go back to the previous screen, we simply press the increment button again. And if you let the battery finish charging, your charger should beep and the screen will display the total voltage of the battery and the balanced voltage for each cell. And once again, this is the preferred way to charge your battery because it increases the lifespan of the battery. And now we are going to cancel this charge by pressing the escape button so we can demonstrate the fast charge option. So, and if you remember the from the previous video, fast charge saves you a little bit of time when charging because it does not fully charge your battery and it skips the balancing step and only looks at the overall voltage when charging. So you will get an almost fully charged battery in a shorter amount of time, but the battery will not be balanced. So we can first unplug the balance connector from the balance connector board since the fast charge method does not use it. Next we can cycle to the fast charge by pressing the increment button and now we can enter the values for the charge current and for the voltage of the battery using the same buttons as before and here you see that the charge rate 
is already 5.0 amps, so we'll leave it there. And the voltage is already 11.1 volts for a three cell battery, so we can leave that. And then we can hold it down and the battery will perform its check and then you'll be asked to give confirmation and if everything looks good you can just press enter and now it begins to charge and and you'll see that the screen is exactly the same except now it says fast charge alright so now we're going to demonstrate the last type of charging by canceling the fast charge by just pressing the escape key and this is a storage charge, so we can just simply hit the increment button. And if you remember from the previous video, a storage charge will bring the voltage of each cell of your battery to the proper storage value, which is within the 3.7 volts to 3.85 volt range. And this should always be done when storing your batteries because it will increase the lifespan of the battery. So we will press the so we can press the enter slash start key to change the charge current. So we'll just leave it at 1.0 amps here. And then you can press it again to change the voltage. And be sure to connect your balance connector into your balance connector board or into your balance connector port. And we can enter the charge by holding down the enter button. And once again, the battery will perform its check, and you'll ask, be asked to give it confirmation. And now you'll see that the screen displayed is the exact same, except it now says storage charge. And then you can press the increment button to view the individual voltages for each cell. So you'll see that this charger will actually try to bring these cells down to 3.7 volts because that's what this charger thinks is a good charge for the storage charge so if you want to store at a different voltage than your charger than what your charger thinks is appropriate you simply need to monitor the storage charge for each cell and these will get balanced over time so you'll notice that these are just being brought down and then to cancel the charge you just simply hit the escape button and now we can now we're going to attempt to charge a battery that is not connected so you can see the error that will appear so I'm going to disconnect the balance connector and I'm going to disconnect the battery and now if you attempt to charge the battery by holding down the enter key you'll see that the battery checks and now you're going to get a output as connection break and it will repeatedly beep and then you can just press the escape button to cancel this and that's it for this video so that's how to charge your lipo batteries using the different types of charging and some things to take into consideration when purchasing a charger and if this video was helpful, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And in the next video, we will be demonstrating how to use the save and load functions provided by these four button chargers, which will make charging your batteries even more convenient. All right, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.